Let's just settle this. Eugene, your team. Pirates, uh, Kaza Chiefs, where are you uh, with the Soweto Derby? You've seen what he's wearing, right? Look, when I was growing up, my favorite cousin yeah? was a Kaza Chiefs supporter. Okay. He had the posters of, Deshi, of, of everyone that you could think of back in the days in the 80s. And uh, I'm from Mamelodi. Mm. So by affiliation, I love Mamelodi Sundance. Yeah. And then because of my surname, I'm a Pakania. Oh. Yeah, but so I don't choose me. <sighs> Whenever people are playing, I just watch. You just watch. <laughs> <laughs> Can't choose. Chiefs anyway, amongst family members who are anyway? No, no, my family members are like not into soccer. Okay. Yeah. And funny enough, I used to work for a show that was about the World Cup and I traveled the world covering sporting events. Yeah. And I would look at these soccer players and go, Who's that? <laughs> and they'd go, That's Eugene. That's Ronaldo. <laughs> What does he do? <laughs> what does he do? <laughs> what does he do? <laughs> oh my goodness. Is he good? <laughs> Let's talk about also your, you know, yeah. taking it back to your love for, for comedy. I, I love mm. it when I talk to professionals and just talents mm. about when they first started. I mean, take me back to those years uh, when you first knew that, listen, comedy is definitely the route that I'm taking. I still don't know that for a fact. Um, mm. I always say I fell into comedy by coincidence. I, I'd never watched stand-up comedy in my whole life. I think you can count on one, I can count on one hand the number of specials that I've watched the stand-up. I don't consume stand-up personally. Mm. But then I had a friend, that's still my friend, Trevor Goombi, who had just started doing stand-up for a year now at the yeah. time. He said I must come join him for a stand-up show. Then when I went to Horror Cafe, I met now a great friend of mine, Giriboni Mulauzi, who said, mm. you see what they just did there? I think mm. you can just try it out and do it. Really? Then I thought to myself, eh, I'm not sure. Then he said, please, do it. Are and you I thinking didn't in class back in high school? You weren't the jokester No ways. I, kn I know funnier people. At school, there were funnier people than me. Yeah. My mom is funnier than me. So mm -hmm. my friends are funnier than me. So I never thought I was the funniest person alive. It's just that technically as a job, stand-up, can be done. You have to be technical about it. Mm. You can't just be funny. So that's what I learned over time. And it took me almost 15 years to figure that part out. Over. So when you say technical, what do you mean by that? Mm. How, like, how to read a room or how to use the, the awkward moments? Or mm. what do you mean technical? Timing. What were you seeing? Like the timing? Timing is everything in comedy. The pauses are normal. You must not be scared of being uh, silent because the silence means something. Mm. You, you must give audiences, you must pace them. Mm. You pace your audience because o almost laughing too hard can sometimes work against you as a comic because people get tired. It's, it's tiring. Your cheeks get tired. Your right. stomach gets tired. <laughs> now you've hit a, a top spot in your show like 50 minutes in, but people have laughed so hard in the first 30 that they want to laugh, but they can't laugh. It's like they've peaked too early. Yes. Wow. So pacing your audience is, is very important. It's like a musician. You know, you can't, you can't play the hits too early. Wow. Yeah. It sounds like science to me. Like so you have to be well calculated. Absolutely. So why take the break? There was a lot that went on in my life uh, mm. that I was burying underneath. Um, a few personal losses that I had, people that I truly loved that passed away. Mm. And I felt guilty for being funny. And I, felt, I feel like a lot of people that are dealing with grief and depression sometimes don't want to talk about this. Um, you feel guilty for laughing. You feel guilty for having fun. Mm. And weirdly enough, I have a job where I make people happy, mm. but I was not happy myself. And I felt guilty for being out there and having a good time while mm. knowing that all of this was happening. Mm. So I had to process the guilt. For me, that was the first step. Yeah. Processing the guilt and then the loss and then the grief. And then finally, I decided I've lived the grief, the loss, and the, and, and the sadness long enough, and yeah. I wanted to be happy again, and I yeah. chose happiness again. That's so interesting. Yeah. That's so interesting because um, we often talk about this to say, you know, when people pass away, how mm -hmm. quickly do people move on? Mm -hmm. You know, how quickly, and I suppose that's mm -hmm. where the, the guilt came from, that I don't want to move on too quickly, mm -hmm. as if your impact in my life didn't mean that much to me. But also, do you ever feel a responsibility to make people love who are going through that grief, to say, I will be your escape. Absolutely. Um, my work will be the escape that you need, to say, you know what, there is light on the other side of the tunnel. It took me doing an interview three months ago and I hadn't really decided to do a stand-up show because we only decided to do this 40 days ago to do this one-man show coming back after four or five years mm. and it was during that conversation with Caesar on his radio show mm. that I realized that people do need it there is someone out there who wants that night to go and have a laugh and forget about everything just for that one hour sure. and if that person existed in my life I would have been happy to take the opportunity to go see them and experience that, that fun for that one hour because grief never goes away. You know, it just finds ways to hide and mm. you must distract yourself and find ways to cope with it. So I want to be that change because funny enough, throughout my whole entire career, I never felt like comedy was one thing I struggled with. It was natural to me 
to be funny and technical in that way on stage, mm -hmm. but now I feel like I found a purpose. Now I know that that happiness means something to someone else. Mm. I'm curious as a comedian, sorry, because what you're mm. asking now mm -hmm. sparked another thought from me, uh, maybe the high school side, not yeah. being the, uh, the, the, the cliched uh, classroom Class joker. Mm. <laughs> Do mm -hmm. you ever get grief from family members or friends that you can't take things seriously, that they, they don't think you can take life seriously because everything's a joke to you do you ever get that kind of attitude yeah I, I think I get that mostly with people that I date then they don't think I am serious because I'm quite boring and I'm quite serious and I'm a mm. contrast to what I am on stage and like I say my mom has never watched one of my stand-up shows ever in her life and mm. it's because it's weird she would see a side of me that she doesn't know and she's raised me for this long yeah. she'll be surprised so there is that weirdness that happens where you have your stage persona uh. and your real life persona and it, it's rare that you find a comic so that's it out there on stage. it doesn't work in the dating no. scene so what happens they think that this is what they're going to yeah, to get yeah, they, yeah, and yeah, they you think... just want to sit on the couch and Netflix and chill <laughs> yeah and I'm like mm, okay <laughs> what do we do now okay <laughs> what are we watching Eugene <laughs> You don't have specials lined up for the date. No, nothing. No, no. So you, 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 you are very contemplative as a comic. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to, what you have to remember is in a set, you have to cram in a year's maybe experience in 50 minutes. Sometimes when you're doing a high quality club in 10 minutes or seven minutes, mm -hmm. you have to cram in all your experiences, your emotions into seven minutes. Yeah. So that's a lot of thinking and positioning and p plotting and putting things together and that's why I love what you guys do. You guys are so yeah. technical and, and savvy. You guys are like, right. your timing is incredible. <laughs> Thank so you. So I admire Thank that. You. And also for you, I mean, then take us through <laughs> then that uh, content process where you, you gather your, your material. Mm. You did mention you're not too inclined with politics. Mm -mm. And what do you talk about then generally? Life, relationships, how people see things, how males see things. Because I think we've gotten to a point where a lot of uh, people are not secure about who they are. Mm. So I get to represent what I see and who I am and put it out there so we can better understand each other. Mm. I always look at what I do almost as relationship therapy. I say the things that I want people to have said to me before I made the mistake mm. that I'd made. So I get to put people together and say, that's how guys see it. That's how people see it. That's how your neighbor views it. And then it's a stand-up show because people can relate. That's because, relatable. Yeah, because they're like, oh, that's me. Oh, that's mm. him. That's yes. her. Yes, yeah. and it's like an yeah. affirmation. I mean, it's because you, uh, if you've got these thoughts, most people don't have platforms to get that immediate feedback. But something yes. that you think might be weird as a, as a mm. man or as a guy, you put it out there, and you suddenly realize, actually, this is how everyone else is feeling. You see how good you are? You figured out comedy. Comedy is affirmations. That's yeah. exactly what it is. People don't laugh because it's funny. They laugh because they know it. Yeah. They yeah. are agreeing with you. So what you have to do is you have to position your affirmations well into the conversation yeah. and paste them into it so that they can agree all the way through. That's what? it. You spoke about uh, it doesn't work necessarily in relationships and, and mm -hmm. dating and yeah. family, but you're a, not a different person, but there's a different side of you, yeah. Yeah. obviously, as well. What is off, what is out of bounds for you in comedy? Because I would imagine, like most talk show hosts, I imagine most comedians are picking up info as they're going along, little things, little triggers. Mm -hmm. What is out of bounds for you? Talking about exes, mm. talking about <laughs> your mom. What do you go, <laughs> I'm not touching this one? Politics. Okay. Because I feel like politics affect people on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. Like, I can't make fun of the fact that people don't have water or electricity or their toilets don't flush. For me, that's, that's their reality. They live it. They didn't choose this. Mm. But relationships, you can choose to be with a person. Neighbors, you can choose to move somewhere else. So I feel like when you talk about politics, we have to be very, very sensitive. Mm. So I don't touch that subject because I feel like there's things I know nothing about and lives I know I'm fortunate to know nothing about because I'm privileged enough yeah. not to live that kind of a life. Absolutely. I have to ask you this because I think we've asked almost everyone since it happened. Yes. Surely maybe you did kind of anticipate that it might come up. <gasps> the Will Smith slap. <laughs> Slapgate. Yes. Slapgate. <laughs> Slapgate. You, you need to tell us how you feel about Slapgate. So because as, you, as, as you do that, <laughs> I saw the funniest trend. Yeah. Trust South Africans to get an international trend wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's called Slapgate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as South Africans, if you take the letter E away yeah. from the word gate, and for about four days, I just saw Slapgate <laughs> trending, and I couldn't figure out what in the world was going on. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. Trust Cape they Town. Sorry, Cape Town. Do. Trust them to drop the E and call it Slapgate. Sorry, I had to throw that in. <laughs> Where do you stand with Slapgate? Ah, I think Slapgate showed us how, as a famous person, you get away with so much in your mm -hmm. real world, in your real life, that when you become uh, upset in a stage like that, you think you can still get away with it. And what had happened to him mm -hmm. is he did get away with it. 
his movies are back on, his career is back on. Yesterday he posted with the Lakers, the whole team was there. Mm. The same people that were like, oh, that's wrong. Mm. The same people that are, post, are posing with him. So it shows you that Hollywood is a weird world. It's, you can literally, get, Harvey Weinstein is getting away with it. Mm. Mm. Kevin mm. Spacey is getting away with it. Mm. So that's the world that they live in. So Tina, we have no idea what that world is like. We're just watching it on, on Twitter. There's lots of money involved. Yeah. And obviously, a studio is not going to fold just because two black men slapped each other or one mm. slapped another. Mm. You know, it had, it had, for them, some Someone has to die mm. and even that was dying um who's that uh, director actor alec baldwin mm -hmm. yeah. shot yes. two people shot one person sorry one person died, died. Mm. is he in jail no yeah so we don't it understand the, the level of celebrity and power that people in america have and the studios have over people's lives mm. anything can be bought do you think it would have been different if it was a fan or someone in the audience who walked on stage and slapped a comedian um mm. do you think it would, the reaction would have been different i mean I, personally i felt like will smith knew better he too yes. is a comedian he's a jokester he he has sitcoms you know under his belt he should have known better but in, in terms of just uh, slapping the uh, answer is in your uh, question he knew yeah. he knew that he would survive this but had Chris Rock made a big deal out of it, he would have never survived it. I wanted to ask you mm. about the reaction from Chris yeah. Rock as well. Mm. A, what did you make of his reaction? Yeah. And B, what would you have done? I would have done what Chris Rock did. Because if he had raised too much smoke against Will Smith, he would have had to go through all the studios that support Will Smith's projects. Wow. He would never survive it. He would be the troublemaker. So economical. It's economical. Of course. It's a financial decision. Of course. Mm -hmm. All of those numbers were running through his head after the slap had rang in his ears. So I think the best thing for his career was to take it on the chin, literally. Sure. But if he were to press charges and make a big deal out of it, he would have never survived. He would have been and, the troublemaker. And we're gonna, we really are going to talk about your one-man show. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about Slapkhat. Let's talk about Slapkhat. Let's keep talking about Slapkhat <laughs> for a moment. But I, I'm curious, has it, do you, now that you're back after this little break, it's, uh, you, you got your new, the new show coming up, mm. yes. are you censoring yourself? Are you worried yeah. that someone in the audience is going to go, watch this i want my two minutes of fame mm -mm. on TikTok or whatever mm -mm. and they take offense because what chris rock was talking about there mm -hmm. wasn't political mm -hmm. it was a personal thing which is really your target mm. are you worried that somebody might do something last question for now now in two in two, to answer that twofold uh, one i don't have fans who are volatile like that and secondly i think for them this was brewing a long time ago mm. people who know them personally know that this thing was brewing a long time ago and will need to make a public statement mm. and make sure that he understands that he's not to be trifled with you know hmm. so Interesting. you see that word i use Trifled, trifled with. with, not tried. Tri trifled. trifled with. Yes. We're, getting, we're getting fancy Google on the South African. We've gone from slap hat to trifle uh, in the same conversation. Don't know what's going to happen on this show.